Thinking of selling your home? Here are some helpful hints and suggestions to help maximize your profits from Karen Lawrence, realtor with the Kai's Company. Karen sells real estate throughout all of South Florida. With a sales career spanning more than 30 years and as a real estate professional since 2008, Karen has the ability and knowledge to relocate and serve a wide range of local, national, and international families. Through her dedication, attention to detail, integrity, and communication skills, she has always strived to satisfy the most discerning buyers and sellers. With all of this expertise, Karen has gained a tremendous insight into this process of selling real estate. Now, Karen Lawrence would like to share some of this knowledge with you. Can you sell your home without a broker? The answer to that question is probably, but at what cost? The major cost is, of course, money. The rest is time, aggravation, and disappointment. Regardless of whether real estate is marketed and sold with a broker or sold as an owner, the selling process contains the same five elements. Pricing, marketing and staging, qualifying, negotiating, and finally number five, following through. Now let's discuss these both as an owner and also what you must look for in your broker, what you and your broker must do to make the sale both a profitable and a pleasurable experience. First, pricing. Correctly pricing a property is probably the most difficult of the five to accomplish, both for the realtor and the owner. As an owner, the difficulty is because of the personal attachment to the home. If you can let go and price your property based upon the market, you'll find you've overcome the first hurdle. Most often, as an owner, price is based on three factors which, unfortunately, have no bearing on reality. The first is intrinsic value. By that, I mean it's worth more because I slept here. I'm only partially kidding. Don't we all feel we've maintained our property better than our neighbors and thus we should be able to ask more for it? Intrinsic value. Not a factor in reality, but definitely something spinning around in most sellers' minds. The second factor sellers use to establish price is recent neighborhood sales. Now, this can be an accurate guide, provided the information is obtained from the correct source, and that is, of course, the public records. All too often, an owner will talk to a neighbor, and they'll tell them that they sold for, say, whatever, when in reality, they receive much less. The question is, why did they mislead their neighbor? And the obvious answer, to save face. To make this a valid indicator of value, a complete competitive market analysis must be done. Karen will do this on her first appointment with you. Also, remember that buyers looking at properties in your neighborhood will have access to the same information, just as I'm sure you did before buying this home. Because of this, it is extremely important that you realistically price your property based on facts and not emotion. Recent neighborhood sales, a good barometer of market value, provided the source is valid. Finally, the third ingredient the seller will use to set the price is improvements made to the property. And most often, when we make improvements to our home, we don't have an economic calculator out trying to determine the future value. We make improvements that will benefit and enrich our lives. It's usually not until we're ready to sell that the calculator comes out, and then we expect to receive all, if not more, than we paid for those improvements. Only under certain circumstances will we raise the value of our property by making an improvement. One example would be if we improve the property up to the standard for the neighborhood. If ours is one of the few homes without a pool, then adding a pool will definitely add value. Maybe not the full cost of the pool, but at least a portion of it. Another example would be what I call a user improvement, a home customized for the disabled or adding outside access for a parent or teenager. Unfortunately, most improvements made are cosmetic in nature, and although they make the property more showable and, yes, maybe even more saleable, they very rarely make it more valuable. You see, for the same reasons we improve the property, the next buyer will make changes to satisfy their desires and tastes, and the cycle continues. For just a moment, let's look at price from a totally different perspective. Suppose I was your stockbroker and you called and said, I want to sell a thousand shares of my copper stock. I'd say, well, let's look and see what the price is today. Now, oh, here it is, $14.75 per share. But wait a minute, you scream, I paid twenty two fifty for those shares. Now, as your stockbroker, I'm going to make one statement and then give you two options. The statement, I'm sorry, but that's the market today. And the two options, one, sell at fourteen seventy five, or two, hold and wait to see if the market goes up. Now, back to real estate. My basic definition of market value is simply what we can reasonably expect a future buyer to pay, which is based upon what previous buyers have paid. To overcome the pricing hurdle, I would again make two important recommendations. First, look carefully at Karen's complete competitive market analysis for your property. And then second, and most important, be objective. I know it's difficult, but try to detach yourself from the property and objectively look at it through the eyes of a potential buyer. As a broker, you would think that it would be easy to be impartial and correctly price the property to sell. I mean, with all of the tools and vast amount of information available at a keystroke, we can make a very professional competitive market analysis. 
Unfortunately, many times in an associate's excitement and enthusiasm to take the listing, they may not be as firm as necessary when establishing market value. Also, be cautious of the salesperson that simply asks what you want to sell for and then says, no problem, we can get that. One of Karen's mission statements is that she will always provide the seller with a complete competitive market analysis, which shows the honest and fair market value. She further agrees to only enter into a marketing agreement with a seller who is realistic regarding the fair market value of their property. Price the property to sell, and it will. The second area requiring your expertise is marketing and staging. Now, marketing can be defined as the ability to expose a property to the greatest potential market in the hopes of finding a buyer at the highest possible price and in the shortest time. Now, agreed, a broker has a tremendous advantage in this area, but it is also true that an owner can still market their property. As an owner, you must first make up a complete and detailed fact sheet, very similar to the multiple listing service brochures you may have seen on other homes for sale. Also, include multiple photographs. Have at least 1,000 of these brochures printed, and then begin an intense marketing blitz. An immediate source of exposure will be to the brokers that have properties for sale in your neighborhood. Deliver a dozen to each salesperson that's marketing a property in your area. Next, make sure that all of your neighbors know that your property is for sale. You'll also want to hold your home open most weekends, making sure that you have enough directional signs to lead potential buyers from every major road. Oh, also, be sure to check with the local governmental and housing authorities to comply with the various sign ordinances that abound. And obviously, a sign in front of the house is a must. Finally, advertise. Advertising in reality is the least effective method of finding a buyer. In fact, only about 9% of all sales come from advertising. But it is still an area that must not be overlooked. You should develop a two-pronged advertising attack. First, community and daily newspapers and magazines. And second, utilize the Internet. Develop your own website and then place ads in the numerous for sale sites that abound. Simply type for sale by owner in a few search engines and you're on your way. Using each of the marketing techniques you have available to you and using them to your fullest advantage will at least put you on the playing field of finding a buyer. As your marketing representative, Karen will provide you with a step-by-step -step marketing program specifically designed for your home. This marketing program will of course put your home in the multiple listing service, which extends from Homestead on the South, North throughout Dade, Broward, Palm Beach, Martin, and St. Lucie counties. In addition, she will expose your property through a mass marketing approach unique to the Kais Company. This mass marketing begins with a special telephone hotline system, where buyers can call 24 hours a day and listen to a pre-recorded message about your property. When buyers drive by your home, they can call right from their car, or when they're browsing through a newspaper or real estate magazine, the same information will be available by phone. Anywhere, anytime, buyers will have access to information about your property. The next level of Karen's mass market approach will take your property viral throughout the world with the Kai's Internet homepage, which through Realtor.com, ListHub.com, and Proxio.com is networked to more than 150 million people worldwide. These websites are not only designed to give each viewer a thumbprint overview of the type of property they're looking for, but also provides buyers with multiple photographs and a complete information package about your property. And finally, recognizing the tremendous importance of the relocation market, exposure of your property will also be gained through the Kais Company's relocation network, which encompasses 140,000 sales professionals with the leading real estate companies of the world. This relocation network sells an average of 900,000 homes annually, valued at more than $350 billion. The next step is staging your home to sell. Staging, platform, theater, playhouse, presentation, demonstration, exhibition, exposition, show scene, take one. You may never have been in the arts, acted out Shakespeare, or even attended a Broadway play. But when you put your home on the market, you are all of these rolled into one. Now let's make sure that you get rave reviews. Here are a few hints, four in fact. Clean it, paint it, fix it, box it. Now, it should be obvious that the property must be kept clean throughout the selling process, but what I'm referring to is that you go beyond the obvious of vacuuming and dusting. When was the last time you cleaned the oven and completely emptied the refrigerator to clean it? Look up at the ceiling, especially in the corners. Any cobwebs? Clean around each light switch for handprints. And also, if you have pets, check to see if they've left marks from rubbing against the baseboards in their favorite rooms. If, as a buyer, you walked into a new home model center, you would expect everything to be new and shiny. Well, in a resale, even though everything won't be new, you can make it shine. Painting is next. I don't advocate painting the entire home, unless, of course, it needs it. What I'm referring to are the touch-ups we seem to put off forever. Check the corners of each room where the paint has been rubbed or chipped away. Oh, by the way, go to the local office supply store and buy a few colored markers. For these small areas, it makes touch-ups a breeze. And one last thing, if you have teens, especially creative ones, and they've decided that this year's coolest colors are mauve and hot pink, 
you might want to diplomatically suggest that an off-white might be a more appropriate color for the selling season. The third area of staging is fixing. Everything from a dripping faucet to the loose handle on the kitchen cabinet. If it's broken, fix it. And finally, box it. One of the best selling features, and one that women always notice, is the amount of closet space. Take a look at your closets. At least half, if not more, of the stuff on the top shelf and on the floor in the back probably hasn't been disturbed in over a year. Go to the local moving and storage company and buy five to ten good-sized boxes. Pack up all of these treasures and store them in the garage. Or better yet, while you're at the moving and storage company, rent a warehouse for a few months. Do you remember those three words, showable, saleable, valuable? Well, when it comes to staging your home to sell, these words take on a whole new meaning. By doing everything we've discussed, you'll definitely make your home more showable which means it becomes more saleable, and yes, even more valuable, at least more valuable than if you didn't do them. The third area of expertise required to successfully sell your home is qualifying the buyer. Now, there are three areas that need to be explored when qualifying a buyer. And the first is financial. This is an area that is best left to the experts. The qualification criteria are in a constant state of flux because of the volatility of the mortgage market. With interest rates changing daily, the qualification requirements change just as rapidly. The Kai's Company has its own mortgage company, Kai's Mortgage and Title, and Karen has chosen a loan representative to specifically work with her. The mortgage representative will call and pre-approve her buyer right on the phone. Whenever your home is shown by Karen, you can rest assured the buyer is financially approved to buy. The secondary of qualifying is the buyer's wants, and third, their needs. Now, it would seem that a buyer's wants and needs would be the same, but not so. A buyer's wants are those things that they will verbally tell us they're looking for. I want a three-bedroom, two-bath, with a pool, two-car garage in this neighborhood. Unfortunately, what they end up buying is a 4-2 on a canal in a totally different area. And the reason is their needs. People don't buy bricks and mortar. They buy romance, prestige, safety for the family. Even ego and status come into play. It is a major part of the selling process for Karen to totally qualify the buyer in all of these areas before she shows your home. Negotiating comes next. To successfully negotiate with a buyer, two things are very important. One, you must always understand the buyer's position. And number two, as I mentioned earlier in pricing, try to be objective. In other words, don't let your emotions take over. As a sales professional, Karen has been trained in the art of negotiating, and it is just that, an art. Because she has fully qualified the buyer before showing her property, she knows exactly what motivates them. She has found as an example that the buyer's children are at the center of their world, and your home is not only on a cul-de-sac, but has a streetlight in front. You also have a wooden jungle gym set in the backyard, that because your children are grown, you're leaving for the next buyer. All of these items will become a part of the negotiating process. As an owner, try to understand a buyer. First, ask yourself why they called directly or knocked on your door. In other words, why aren't they using a broker to find a property? The answer to that question is simply that they believe they can get a better price because no broker's commission is involved. Remember, market value is market value. It's based upon what other buyers have paid for similar homes. And since better than 83% of all homes are sold through brokers, the market value price includes the commission. It is not added on top. The last area of expertise is follow-up. With a signed contract in hand, now the real work begins. You have a date set for closing that is probably 30 to 45 days away. For the closing to go smoothly, there are no less than six different agencies, and usually a dozen or more that will be involved. Let's see, there's the mortgage company, the title company, one or two insurance companies, inspectors, surveyors, not to mention attorneys. Even though it's the buyer's responsibility to apply for the mortgage and contact the insurance and inspection companies and so on, remember, it is your closing. To the mortgage company, this may be only one of 75 homes that they're closing this month, but to you, you see, what we must do is make sure that your file is always on top of the stack. When your home is sold by Karen, she will constantly be calling these agencies to keep this process running smoothly and will always keep you advised as to what's going on. I would suggest that if you do sell your own home, that you do exactly the same thing. Make up a sheet with every company, agency, and person responsible for each facet of your closing. Make a few copies you have access to one at all times. When you find yourself with a few minutes free, start calling. Karen Lawrence would like to share with you a concept that has helped shape her real estate career. Don't be afraid to help the sellers do what they want to do, sell the property themselves. Well, of course, Karen wants to market and sell your home. That's her profession. But she has also found that by helping you try to sell it yourself, by answering questions you may have, by providing professional expertise, she has laid a foundation for her future. After selling yours, you might need help in finding the right home. Or if you know of someone that might need her services, she would hope that you would think of her. And of course, if you're not able to market and sell your home, well, Karen is only a phone call away. 
Throughout her real estate career, Karen has always tried to impart to buyers and sellers a basic philosophy. Give to the world the best you have, and the best will come back to you. Good luck. Karen Lawrence wishes you tremendous success in selling your home.